Joe Bergamini is our first panelist today. Joe maintains a diverse career as a performing drummer and educator. With performances at over 15 Broadway shows to his credit, he currently tours internationally and records with the Doo Wop Project and other artists. He's been teaching privately for over 30 years, is education consultant for Sabian, the senior drum editor for Hudson Music, and is co-owner of Wisdom Media Publications. Tim Buell is a Nashville-based drummer and educator who has spent many years touring and recording with artists like Gloriana, Cody Fry, Remedy Drive, and others. He's also transcribed many iconic drum grooves and drum solos, and his transcriptions have been featured by Zildjian, Vic Firth, the Percussive Art Society, and he has created notation books with Ash Schoen, Aaron Sterling, and Aaron Spears. Tony Sukar, whose music you just heard, is a two-time Latin Grammy award-winning artist, producer, and composer-arranger. In 2019, he received four nominations for his album, Mas de Mi, winning producer of the year and best salsa album, and making history as the youngest winner to ever win in both categories. His musical diversity is well known in the industry, having worked with an impressive array of talented artists, including Tito Nueves, India, John Cicada, and Mark Anthony, among others. Welcome to our panelists. Welcome to our audience. We're glad you're here. And to get things started, I'm just going to have you guys introduce yourselves. So if you would tell us a little bit about your background as a musician, when you started playing, what first drew you to composing, arranging, anything you'd like to share. Uh, Joe, why don't you take it away first? Sure. Thanks, Felicia. Hey, everybody. Uh, Joe Bergamini coming to you here from New Jersey. So I'm a drummer. Uh, I'm a drum set specialist. I'm a drum set player. Um, so uh, I started playing drums as a huge Rush fan. I listened to Neil Peart a lot, and I acquired an early transcription book um, that had the transcriptions. And I would listen along when it was too late to play drums and, uh, and follow along, and it got me interested in transcribing music. So I started getting interested in transcribing. This is why I pursued you know, my playing career, which eventually led to Broadway or whatever. Um, and I started writing columns for Modern Drummer, and that culminated in me doing a book for them called MD Classic Tracks. So I was just saying before we started, I think I'm the 25 year plus finale user, um, but you know, all really focused on, on the drum set uh, area. But um, that's how I got into using finale and um, just went on from there playing. Um, as I continued playing and teaching, I kept working on transcriptions and eventually got into the publishing side. And um, I guess that's where my, biggest expertise is in like, you know, evaluating charts for publication. And I still keep active with Finale. Um, I just, I did the Finale work again myself for my latest book, which is the Working Drummer's Chart Book. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my background as a player and transcriber, fe attempted Finale user guy. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, Tim, you want to go next? Sure. Um... I'm Tim. I'm coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I started using Finale in college. I got my degree from Belmont University, and Finale was what they had us learn when we were going through that program. And, you know, I learned it for the classes and, you know, didn't like the classes I was taking, but eventually started using Finale to start doing transcription. Um, I had some drummers that just weren't being covered in like YouTube lessons or anything. So I decided like, well, I'll, I'll try and figure out what they're doing. So I started transcribing, uh, that led to, you know, once I started touring and recording, uh, which is like most of what I do. Um, I also just always had transcriptions I was working on and stuff. And once I became a Vic Firth artist, I started doing some transcriptions for them and for Zildjian, and, and now I've had the, the honor of transcribing for a bunch of drummers like Benny Greb and the people that are listed on the bio and stuff, and it's kind of become this whole, transcription has kind of become this whole fun side of what I do for brands and other drummers that uh, I never would have thought was a thing when I was in college. Um, but yeah, Finale has been great. I would not be able to do it without Finale. So I'm very thankful for that. But um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of that. All right. And Tony, over to you. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm a, a producer and an arranger. I uh, 
uh, started using Finale in college as well. That's where I learned it. Uh, I went to FIU and I got a master's degree in jazz performance. Uh, I would say I'm more of an orchestrator. I don't really dedicate myself um, just to percussion. However, since I'm a percussionist, I try to be very detailed with the way I write um, in the popular music setting um, because sight reading is such an important thing for me. Like um, when we're in the studio or we're in rehearsals and or shows, you know, like to be able to write stuff that's um, easy and easy friendly, you know, to read. Uh, but I use it a lot uh, in conjunction with Pro Tools because uh, I'm always either arranging in Pro Tools or arranging in Finale and then back and forth. I have to go back and forth between DAW, uh, between the DAW and um, the notation software. So that's sort of um, uh, what I like to, to do, you know, um, to make my life easier when I'm producing music. But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much... Um, my background in finale. All right. So we already have questions flying in the Q&A and we've got some people in chat. So just a quick reminder, if you will add your questions to the Q&A rather than the chat, it helps us keep track of those. But um, to get things started, I'll open it up to the panelists if you want to kind of talk about your approach to when you first open up finale, what are you what is, what is your approach? Do you start with a blank score? Do you have a set in mind of what you're already going to do? Have you drafted it out on paper first? Kind of just give us an insight there. Anyone who wants to jump in. I get, I'll, I'll jump in really quick. I, I really only uh, make rhythm drum charts and drum transcriptions. And for that, I have a template that I created myself. I changed out all the fonts and tweaked all the note heads to exactly kind of what I want. Um, it has a drum legend up top and that means I can just open up that template, go to work. That's like the only starting place I really have is that one template. Um, and I tweak it every now and then, but um, you know, over the years I have tweaked and tweaked and tweaked it to look and kind of be laid out how I like it. So I always just start putting right into finale from my template should i uh should i offer something here um if you if you guys want um what i'd like to do I, and i agree with tim uh when you've been doing this for a while and you make so many tweaks that you wind up having template uh, your own template which actually can be a file that you just have and you start from there but um if you guys want i was gonna maybe i really think the startup wizard for percussion is really helpful right now um, and I saw there was a question about getting started with percussion. Um, should I share screen maybe and show that? Um, can you guys see my screen here? Okay, so um, I think that uh, if you go, so here's the setup wizard. And um, so like Tim, I just do drum charts. So what I might do is I might, choose, you know, you could choose like a format. So here's a handwritten style. Um, and, you know, you go next and then here, here's your ensemble. Um, so in, in this, this shows you what's going to be in your score over here. So if you were like Tony and you were doing a whole band, you know, if you're getting started, you would leave in whatever you want. I just take everything out and, and leave the drum set because I'm making, again, my thing here is like, it's usually drum books or drum exercises or drum transcriptions, right? So um, having said that, everything I'm about to say after this, you can, would apply to the drum set or percussion staff in your score. Um, so then, okay, if you, when you go next, this is asking if I wanna change the settings of this template, which I definitely don't wanna do. Um, and then here's where you'd say, you know, our, uh, our music, you know, whatever you title it. I'm not going to put all this stuff in, but you can put all your credits in. Um, and then you have this new thing right here. Okay. Um, what this, what's happened here is it's opened up. If you go windows score manager, it's opened up this stock drum set. Um, if I edit, so I'm, I'm going into the, I'm looking at everything that's in the score and these are the settings for this, this percussion staff. And if I, if I go to drum set, which I have, and I click edit, this shows all the note heads and all the assigned sounds. And they've made it, 
when I started doing finale, you know, 20 years ago, like this, none of this existed. And it was like a total like project. I probably have like a thousand person hours into like making my templates. This has really made it all so much easier where everything's pre-assigned. Um, if people are interested later, I can talk about how to change. Now, if let's say that, um, you know, you have the ride symbol. So this says ride bell. Let's say I don't want the ride bell to be an X. I want it to be a diamond. Instead of changing the note head and the score, I change it in this map and then that changes it universally. But so just to show you guys what happens is now everything's pre-populated. So, you know, if you, you can see clearly here, there's, I can, as I move the cursor, it's giving me the appropriate note and sound. So if you haven't started yet with a template, this is a great place to start. And um, Felicia, I made a, like a Word document with a couple of little things. And I also, um, I, made a, I made a document here for everybody to have. I, I just have some opinions about how things should look. I'm an opinionated guy. And, uh, and this shows some of those things. Um, so you can share it in there. If anybody has questions about how I made any of these things look this way, I'd be happy to answer it. But um, anyway, maybe that's a helpful for someone who hasn't started a template yet. Totally. I'm seeing in the question and answers a couple things that, so I actually with Finale on, if you go to Finale's YouTube channel, um, I have two lessons on their channel. Uh, the first one is all about getting started with drum notation in Finale. And it actually walks you through just like Joe was showing you how to customize the note heads you want, um, how to build a drum legend. Uh, a lot of the stuff that people are asking in the question and answer, it's like an in-depth video of all of that stuff. And then in the second video, uh, I walk through how I do drum transcribing, like every step of the way. And as well, in that video, there's also a free download of a template I created for Finale that's based on the transcription I ended up doing for lesson two. So point is, if you go over to Finale's YouTube channel and look through the most recent videos, you'll see my face behind a drum set. And those two videos walk you through in depth kind of all of this stuff. And the second video has a template. And by the way, someone was asking, how do you, how do you make a template once you've got things set up like you want? You can actually go up to, maybe Joe, you can show them how to save a document as a template since you have finale open and you're screen sharing right now actually would you do that tim because um sure i'm not unless you want to um sure yeah, okay i've let me, let me got it on. okay uh let's see screen share yes tim while you're pulling that up actually on the subject of your latest video Nelson asked, he says, Tim, I watched your latest finale video. It was excellent. I just wanted to know why you don't notate kick drum in a separate layer with kick stems down like most folks notate. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this comes down to, you know, personal preference for me as a drummer when I'm reading something. Um, I'm thinking of like, where do things actually line up physically when I'm playing? Um, you know, especially with some of the transcriptions I do, uh, things can become like really kind of chaotic when you have two sets of stems going totally separate. Um, so it's more so like a personal preference for me. Uh, but I also think it ends up with a kind of a cleaner approach and it ends up with a more unified as you're reading through the part you're actually seeing what things are supposed to line up with each other if there's a kick drum and a hi-hat hitting together you more clearly see how they're linked and if there's a ghost note in between two kick drums you more clearly see how those are linked but there's certainly a lot of opinions out there that you know people might disagree but as a drummer i'm thinking of the whole drum set as one unit not really thinking about like kick drum that's separate from hi-hat that's separate from snare drum i'm thinking of it kind of all as one cohesive thing um but certainly joe probably has opinions on it too and might be able to give a better answer because <laughs> mine is basically like it's because i like it like that um so basically to save anything as a finale template uh it's really easy you can just go to uh i actually guess i have to have a um, by the way, this is an extremely niche and pro tip, but I have this thing called a stream deck 
if I could, I would show it to you. It's a macro keyboard, and you can program it to do a bunch of stuff, and it's infinitely helpful with shortcuts and stuff in Finale. Um, so I actually have a macro that when I press a little button on my macro keyboard, it just opens up my Finale template. Things like that, when you do it a lot, can I mean, it's just unquantifiable how much it can help you. But, um, okay, so this is my... This is a document that I've tweaked and I've made it my own and I love it and I'm so happy with it. Um, basically to make it my a template is I can go to file, save as, I'll save it on the desktop and right before I save it, instead of doing, um, you know, save as finale notation file, I wanna go to finale template file and then I can hit save and then I can close this and now every time I open uh, that finale template file it'll open it up just like this and the reason you want to create a finale template file is because now that this is a t template file I open it and it automatically labels it untitled one and when you go to save it for the first time you know I can save it as whatever I want if you don't you know some people don't set up template files and they just kind of uh, set up a document that they start from but what that ha what happens is a lot of times you open that document you start from and then hit save and now you've actually overwritten your template file. So you want a proper template file so that you never overwrite that template. You're always starting from somewhere and then the first time you save it'll automatically create a document file as opposed to overwrite your template file if that makes sense. I've got a question here that I think I want to direct to Tony maybe. It says um, this is from either Angel or Angel, I'm not sure, sorry if I mispronounced it. Um, he's saying that he's been incorporating rhythmic patterns, bells, congas, timbales, et cetera, which he programs himself. I don't know how to use the preset audio loops in Finale. How is that done? Also, are there audio loops for merengue or Afro-Cuban patterns? I'm not sure, if Tony, or if any of you use audio loops. If you do, can you kind of speak to that? Yeah, actually, um... I have that same question for somebody if anybody knows how to use audio loops in finale like i if you know what um i usually have to program everything if i want it to to have, have like any type of like um sounding groove um in finale if i have to use audio loops and stuff uh, i've always found it easier to do it in a daw whether it's you know pro tools or logic um and so when i'm in finale um i have to you know, just uh, either play like a little rhythm that I could play back in finale, like with the MIDI or, or just not notating it and then and then use those sounds and sort of imagine how it's going to sound, you know, with better loops and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I, I don't know how to use those loops. Does anybody here know how to use loops in finale, like audio loops? I'm not even sure if that's possible. That would be awesome, though. Um, I've always tried to figure it out, but I'm not sure. Uh, you, usually what I do is I, I go back and forth between the DAW. I think if I, sorry, Tony, not to cut you off, but I think if you wanted to, if you had the loop in a DAW in MIDI format, you could export it as MIDI and then import it into Finale. Um, from that MIDI and it would kind of auto populate the notation. So you can't necessarily use the audio from your DAW in Finale, but you could at least get the part represented in the score that you've already created if you have that in MIDI. So that would be the only right. thing that I could think of. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. I think people want to know what your macro device is, actually. There's a lot of... I want to know, too. Yeah, okay. So can I... Can I... It looks like this. You can see it at the bottom of my screen. It's like all linked in. If I pull it too much, it'll just come out of my computer and I'll ruin everything. So it's called a stream deck. Um, they make them in different sizes. And this one, you can, you know, every time you make a macro, you can, it has like little LED screens for every button. So you can put a nice little label on there and you can even put a cute little picture if you want. Um, but it's incredible. So I, I'll actually show people, if people are curious, this is something I actually have never talked about because I'm never in a community of people that care enough that this would be worth it. Um, but I guess 
this is the format. So basically, I have it set up to do some things that are kind of um, take a lot of keystrokes that uh, I, if I don't have to press that many keys to do one thing, I don't want to. So one of the things is, you know, when I'm in a new one, I have a button that opens up a new template. Just hit the button and it opens that file on my computer. Now I have a new template. I'm ready to go. Um, I have two zooms set up. One of them is like the close zoom when I'm doing transcription. So I have one button that automatically zooms me to that. And I have a far button that kind of zooms out. Um, there is a key command in Finale for that, but I never can remember it. And also this is set up for like particular zooms that I've set. Um, it's got things like, so when I put in some drum notation, uh, let's just go here. I use simple entry. I know a lot of people use speedy entry for stuff, but simple entry for drums is like to me the only thing that really makes sense. And it feels good that Joe's shaking his head, nodding his head because, you know, speedy entry when you're doing keyboard and you're doing arranging really does make sense. But for drummers, you know, I'm rarely thinking about things. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. I use simple entry is the point. Um, is there a way I can hide this thing? It's kind of harshing my vibe here. Um it uh, uh listen i'll make do um so when i'm when i'm putting in stickings for my drum set parts i use the lyric tool for that because that means that you know if you use the text tool you can make it look great but when you move that measure somewhere else the text will not be linked to it so i use the lyric tool to put in stickings so if i was going to write the sticking for this measure which it's not really a fill so i wouldn't necessarily do that but um I have a macro set up to, you know, if I'm going to put a sticking in here, I would have to do a capital R and then space and then a capital R and then space. So I'd be tempted to put caps lock on, but then I forget to take caps lock off and it's this whole thing. So I have a macro that if I hit one button, it actually holds shift, presses R, and then hits space bar. So in one button, I'm pressing and it's actually doing three or four things at once. Um, so for here... I usually write, you know, because this is a right hand on hi-hat, left hand on snare drum, I would usually do right, arrow down, sh hold shift left, arrow up, and then hit space bar. That's like five or six key commands, but I can actually just hit one button, and it inputs both. Um, so those are the kind of things I do. I also use, you know, when I write, have to write a sextuplet, that can be a pain because you have to hit control, six, and then hit three, six times, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a lot of buttons to press, and you can't really put a sextuplet in in simple entry. You can do 16th note triplets, but they'll group them in tuplets of groups of three. So for me, I have a macro that I can just hit one button, and it puts in you know eight different keystrokes, and then I can move on to the next thing. So I have it programmed for a bunch of stuff like that that just kind of makes my life easier. If I want to do quintuplets, I can just hit one button and it puts in a quintuplet. Um, so the thing is called a stream deck. It takes a while to kind of get the shortcuts all set up and working, but um, it's it's very much worth it. So I'll stop nerding out about that now. I noticed there's like six questions about how to do the sl a rhythmic notation over the slashes. Should I talk about how I set that up? Absolutely. Okay. Go for it. Um, yeah, big time. So, uh, by the way, I noticed from the questions, like, everybody everybody seems to have, like, a specialty. Like, there's some band directors here, orchestral percussionists, um, you know, different styles of drum set players. I'm a drum set player. And I can, I can tell that we have people who are beginners with Finale and people who are really into the details use it every day. So, you know, bear with us. Like, we all have our own specialty. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know a lot about um, shifting between bells and drum set on the same staff, for instance. But... Um, let me share screen again. Let me let me try to show you. Let me show you what I did. So basically, what I what I did to create this, um, slet, you know, notation over the uh, slashes is I set up a new staff style. And in the in that um, Felicia, did I send you that Word document where I have the little little pointers? Because I have the instructions for doing this in there. 
And I'll, yes, you did. And I'll include it in the email that goes out tomorrow too. I've seen a handful of people ask for the links that I shared earlier. I'll share those periodically, but I'll also include those in our email that goes out tomorrow. So if you missed links, I know Tim's got a PDF. I know Joe's got some things we were sending out. I'll put those okay. all in the email tomorrow. So I'm going to do this and this is being recorded. So if anybody misses a detail, I see people are asking for a repeat of things. Just go back and watch the recording. So um, what I did was I went to staff style and then to def define a new style. I've done this already, but I'm going to do it again. Um, I'm going to, I'll call it new slashes with cues. Okay. And then um, there's a thing that says alternate. Um, so, so this is going to be a new style. Okay. And then uh, next to alternate notation, there's the settings right here. So I went on to this and I chose slash notation. And then in other layers, I, I have everything checked. And what this should do is that means that if you put something in a layer other than one, it will show up um, ideally. So that's what I did there. And then once, once that's pretty much all you have to do. And then you apply that staff style to like, I'll apply that staff style to these two measures. And you do that by going to staff, apply staff style to score and parts. And I'm going to choose new slashes with cues that I just made. And now if I go into layer two and I go to put something in, um, and by the way, this template now has rhythm cues on the top line. If I could just get it to line up. And, and so now I'm at, they show up. So that's pretty much how I did it. And then, you know, you can, you can uh, just, you know, I just use some of the stuff you can automate, like Tim said, but you can make this stems go up. And then while I'm at it, I was always confounded by how there's some things I use speedy entry for Tim and, and, and Tony. I don't know if you guys like, I don't know how to, I don't know any other way that I go in speedy entry to, to move things sometimes, because you could just click on them and drag them. So uh, those rests tend to show up on the staff and in speedy entry, I could just click them and bring them up. So as uh, young Frankenstein said, that's how I did it. You know, I've always wondered if there was a way to, automate that like have the rest of on the second layer just be where the notation is on the top you know um because i do it sort of the similar way um but i thought there would probably be a work around or something yeah i don't i some of the stuff like it's funny i one thing i wanted to say also is that um i mean look i mean I, I don't know the answer to every question, but I've been using Finale for 25 years and I published books with it. I use the help file all the time. It's like super well put together. And if I forget, like I'll type in move arrest vertically, like if I haven't done that for a while. And then I just have a new template um, to uh, that, I, that I save. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to automate that. I While we're here, I just, I did see some other questions about the use of layers and um, you know, obviously, you know, you guys go down here, you choose whatever layer you're on, and um, that allows you to put stems up versus stems down. And I just wanted to give my two cents on that. Um, so having played like 15 Broadway shows, they, they never write the notation like this. And usually I think the reason they don't is because when you look at this measure right here, like you can quickly look at it and see that the hi-hat is playing straight eighth notes. But when you, like, for instance, if you look at like some of the Hudson transcription books, if they're transcribing Steve Smith or Todd Zuckerman or Aaron Spears or somebody who's playing a zillion notes, like if you're analyzing this and they're playing a lot of notes, it's super detailed. But you, when you go to play it, the seeing this in real time, like I don't need to process any of that anymore. I just have to worry about this. And um, I noticed that most Broadway charts either use this logic where this, the even thing is up and everything else is down or very popular with Broadway drum books is hands up, feet down. I don't, I don't know, oh, have a rule for this. It's just to me, whichever one the user, like I know Tony, you said like that, whatever's going to make someone who's really playing it, be able to play it easiest. 
And having gotten in the studio, having gotten charts where there's like eight sixteenth note rests in a row, I'm like, what are you doing? You can't give that to someone. You have to make it as easy as possible. So like I go with whatever is like the clearest. I've got a question for you guys that I'm not sure who the right person to answer is, and it may end up going to Doug too. Um, but I've seen several people asking from all sorts of different genres about playback. So I've seen from orchestral and from marching band and from drum set that people are talking about playback sounds either coming out really quietly or not coming out with the sounds they're expecting when they create a custom map. Do you guys have an approach to making sure that the playback you get is the way you want it to sound? Unfortunately, I rarely use the playback function in Finale, so I, I can't be of much help, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I don't use too much. Um, uh, that's why I always hop between the DAW and Finale, like exporting MIDI and stuff, because, um, I, you know, it, you spend a lot of time, I feel like, um, trying to get those right sounds because notation software will never be like a DAW, you know, DAW is just focused really on giving you the reproduction of the sounds that you want and everything's so tweakable because everything is like either MIDI or audio, but in finale, it's, it's, it's more about the notation. Uh, although it's, it, they've done a great job because you can, you can uh, tweak so many things in finale on the audio side you know, um, on the Mac, you, you hit um, on the Mac, you hit command K and then you can see all your individual instruments and then you can choose what virtual instrument you want to use. So um, I'm definitely sure that there's a way to probably like replace each and every sample on the grid. You know, there has to be a way. I just haven't done that. Um, I feel like it will be quite time consuming but maybe with your macro keyboard, you know, you could just save it as a preset and just, you know, save time. Okay, I'm going to kind of jump back into something that Joe, you were showing earlier today. Someone was asking about when you were doing the setup wizard, you went in and you clicked on percussion and they said they can't find percussion when someone else was asking, where is percussion in the setup wizard? I don't know if maybe we just went too quickly Sorry, through um, that or yeah, if you could me, show that me, one more um, time. Let me share again. Um, you, you guys tell, tell me if I'm showing what you want to see, um, Felicia, maybe you could yell at me. So I, I went to, uh, this setup wizard thing new from the setup wizard. Um, let me get this out of the way. And then, uh, I, I chose, I was in create new ensemble. They have these stock ones and then, you know, you can choose whatever you want. I chose finale Broadway and then it would be the same no matter what you chose and then there's there's other templates you could choose um i don't know if anyone if does this affect the question which one i choose i don't i don't think so um it just all this all this does is it creates a new ensemble so i'm going to choose a different one this time i'll choose jazz band and so in here was where i went and found drums and oh, this, see, this, this is like a blank ensemble over here. So I have to choose what I want to add it. So I'm going to choose drum set and I'm going to add it. And then a little different than how I did it last time. I'm not going to do any of this stuff. So here's, here's in my new drum set thing and it should have the map again. Yep. Does that kind of answer the question? I believe so. Um, Someone, someone asked me how I did, I saw a question, someone asked about how I did this right here, this little thing, play eight with a, with a, uh, you know, like if you're doing a, a chart and you want to abbreviate that, um, this is more for like drum charts, you know, obviously it would screw up if like, if you had this in a score with, uh, other things, but the way I did this was I just, I set up my, uh, template so that it, the empty measures have nothing in them. There's no whole rests in them. And um, I think that's actually in staff styles also. Um, in staff attributes. Um, yeah, see display rests in empty measures. I, I de deselect that so I don't have any false whole rests in the measures. And then once I, once I have that, then I go to the little shape guy and I choose a shape 
I don't know if I have the right one chosen. Yeah, and I chose I chose this trill thing, and I, oops, and I I slap it into measure, and then I you know I put my text in there, and this this text is is an express it's a, a expression. If you don't do it as an expression, it doesn't attach to the measure, and so it will move all over the place. So you have to do it as an expression so it sticks with it. Now, someone mentioned, a more advanced user, that this screws up, and I'm not gonna be able to show this accurately in this because I, I don't, you know, I hide these measure numbers a lot of the times. It messes up, the measure numbers won't be right now because you just played eight measures. So what you would do to fix that is you would go to, you would fix that in editing measure number regions, and you would choose another, you would select this region and you would start it, you know, this is 12 plus eight, right? So this would be 21, I guess. You would choose 21. I don't normally do this, but that's how you would fix that. You would you would choose a different number to start at wherever, and then that would update the, you know, so like that number just went up. So you'd have to, I didn't do the math to figure out the exact numbers, but that's how you would do it. So that's how I did that. I've got two questions that came in for Tony. Um, one from Michael that says, Tony, how do you notate and have a decent playback of a simple tomb bow? And then Carson asks, is there a best or standard staff layout for timbale solos? I've done a lot of drum solo transcriptions and want to transcribe timbale as well. Wow, that's like a really good question. Again, like my, my expertise, like for example, for transcribing a timbale solo, um, the, the, the thing with timbales is that, um, like, for, like I'm a timbale player, right? But um, the way we read timbale charts, um, I guess in the popular music, uh, you know, there's just literally, there's two sounds, either the top drum and the bottom drum, and all the miscellaneous stuff, like if it was a cowbell or, or a clave or anything, it, they usually, like, type in, you know, patterns like uh it was slash you know or the hits for the for the drum so i never actually use a percussion layout when i work on my um parts and scores i just use the drum set one because it's it's a i feel like it's just um a lot faster to notate in um because a lot of times i'll use the actual my, my midi keyboard to import um sounds so I know, for example, uh, the kick and the snare is a C and a D, you know, on my on my MIDI keyboard, uh, like the, the pitch. So I'll be um, importing it, playing it, you know, playing it back into into finale. So if I had to, for example, transcribe a solo on timbales, I would probably um, play it back and then fix it, you know. So I would learn it audio wise and then play it back on my MIDI keyboard um in finale using the c and the d function so um it'll be like for a drummer like if he's playing the kick drum and the snare but for a timbali player they all know that it's the low and the high drum you know so that's sort of the easier way and then for the timbal question um i basically just uh that's when i use the percussion layout and then um let me see uh, I'm going to try to scramble through to see, because I haven't notated an actual tumbao in a long time. Because again, I just use a lot of slashes, uh, just like Joe does, you know, with the hits and stuff. Um, and I use the, you know, I create my own staff style to to write the the hits and, and all those things. But let me see if, while we answer the questions, I'm going to scramble through and I see if I have one. I remember I did one. And then if I have that, I'll open it up and share my screen. While Tony's looking for that, just a quick question for all three of you. Anthony was asking, do all of you use Finale on Windows or are any of you Mac users? Yeah, I'm on Windows. I'm, actually I'm on, on Win. Oh, sorry. What did you say, Tony? <laughs> sorry, I'm actually on Mac. And, and I use it on both, so. Someone else was asking if anyone wants to do a quick little show and tell. They were asking if anyone would show how you start setting up your score if you were to start from a blank page and start typing in some of your drum set notation they just wanted to see kind of the process for how you create the music itself rather than just the layout if anyone wants to go for it tim you want to go <laughs> you want to go you want me to go you, you want to go. go i was talking a lot before <laughs> okay um all right 
here, I'll start a new template with one press of the button. And by the way, a lot of people are asking about the Stream Deck. Um, uh, some people have them and they're wondering if I have a template I could send. My t Stream Deck template would be very like unique and niche to like my specific things. The big thing that I would say if you have a Stream Deck is I use the multi-action function to set up all of these. Um, and I just bought mine on Amazon. I have the 15 key Stream Deck and 15 keys seems to be enough. I don't find myself really wanting like an extra 30 keys to be confused about. I think 15 is a nice kind of compromise of stuff. So this is all set up. I'll zoom in and like I said, I use simple entry. So a lot of times what I do for, and by the way, about the stems down for feet and stems up for hands and stuff, I think Joe's dead on. Like whatever makes it easiest to read for whoever the end user is, is what you want to do. For me, since most of what I'm doing is like intricate transcription stuff, no one's really sight reading it. And if they are, they're going to fail because <laughs> it's like 64th note triplets and stuff. Like it's not, not really created for a sight reading purpose. But for something like a big band chart, like Joe was saying, when the feet are all down and the hands are all up, that can be really helpful because um, it does make it more scannable as to what you need to read. But for me, I use simple entry and I like to kind of, you know, when I'm transcribing something, kind of get the, you know, what's, what's the subdivision that carries throughout the whole thing that I can kind of group everything around. So a lot of times that is something like the hi-hat. So let's say this groove I'm transcribing has eighth notes on the hi-hat. I will, you know, Hey Tim, get the sorry to interrupt. Would you share your screen? <laughs> would that would that be helpful if people could see what I'm doing? Uh, I have my first hi hat placed. Um, I can kind of move it up and down, get it placed, and then what I can do is just place by hitting enter, place those eight hi hats, and then I can go back. Now that I have the hi hat there, I can now go back and you know place the kick drums where I want, place the snare drums where I want. Um, let's say that I need to play some 16th notes. I can hit the number three on the numpad if you have an actual full keyboard or three on the um, top row if you have a laptop and you know play some kick drums there. I can hit four to switch back to eighth notes and get one there can place one there and then let's say it ends with a ghosted 16th note I can switch back to 16th notes by hitting three click this eighth note to turn it into a 16th note and then use my mouth the mouse to place that ghost note wow that was a hard thing to say um, and then let's say that the next measure is kind of similar I can go to the measure tool highlight that measure by clicking it hit control C to copy click the next measure, hit control V to paste. I can go to my expression tool and delete this tempo marking because I don't need it. And then I can come back here and let's say there's just a couple little alterations. I can click what I need um, and you're kind of off to the races. So if that's helpful, there it is. And then at some point, I don't know when the right time is, but at some point, there's a lot of people asking about like DAW and MIDI and all of that stuff. So we, we can definitely get into that and I can at least share the two cents I have on it when that's beneficial. I, I just want to also good. say. Uh, oh, go ahead, Joe. I was going to say, um, for those who don't know, if you're a drum set teacher, I run a thing called the Sabian Education Network and we did a course on Finale. It was, you know, it was a while back, but um, uh, we, we do have, um, I, one of the guys who does a lot of the notation for me at, um, at Hudson Music is uh, Willie Rose. So um, some of these answers I can get, like, um, I'm pretty sure Willie was the one who worked on Groove Essentials to make it so when you tap on the, we, we have some products where, you know, we generated the sounds for the examples out of um, Finale. So like if, if, like, let's say an author didn't write, uh, record the audio, we would just use Finale to create the audio. And um, so, um, Willie did, you know, if we, if we do a part two of this, we can get him on here and he can, he can explain how we did all that stuff. And I can also get answers for that stuff. Um, but yeah, there's some way to do all of it.
Before we get too far from the question that was asked before, Tony, do you have uh, Timbali answer or Tim Tumbao answer? Sorry for us. Yeah, actually, um, I I didn't have one, but I just was creating one right now. Um, I didn't there. You know, if you hit like um, Command K here, I was just browsing through uh, the different um, drums. Like if you go to percussion, the gongas are not here. They have bongos and other this, but in drums here. They have um, gonga drums right here. And what I just did was I just created the the loop here. I'm sure if I play it back, it'll sound. I just have to, I was going to link it. But basically, you have all the tones here. Like the, you have the quinto, the dead stroke, and the slap. So basically, the, the regular tumbao rhythm is two dead strokes. So you have deep, deep, da, and then you have the slap, da, deep, da, and then two open tones. Uh, on the conga, on the quinto, doom, doom, so tika pa, chika, tin, tin, tika pa, right? And then two more strokes, slap, and da, di, da, and then two uh, open tones on the on the tumba, doom, doom. So tika pa, chika, tin, tin, cha, kung, kung, ba, king, king. So if you, if you did, if you copy and pasted that, like you would have um, that sound. So let me assign my sound, but I have to like reroute my, my, because I have everything going through my, um, I have through my DAW right now. So let me, I have to close that and open this back up so I can actually get playback sounds. But yeah, that's you. If you use the, the conga drum thing because it doesn't have it on, on like for example, if you wanted to have, timbales, congas, and bongos and everything. Like for example, I'm gonna show you real quick, like a chart, right? Um, you know, let me go to my arrangements. Um, how I actually wrote notate because this what what I what I just did here was um I have so many folders was doing something specifically for somebody that's gonna be playing just tumbao. But if for example, like a popular percussionist, right, was playing a gig, for example, like I just did this chart sentiment original, right? Um and this is my score. Hold on. So here it is, right? Um and I would go to the percussion chart. You, you get a part, you go to percussion. Uh, this is what it would look like. And as you can see, like this is pretty much the only way like a percussionist can read like a salsa chart, right? With, with a band. Um, because here I have, everything is like by terms. So like when you say campanas three, two, that means you're playing in the three, two clave and you're playing the bell pattern. So the, the bongo player knows that he's playing the handbell. The timbali player knows that he's playing the, the mambo bell. And, you know, if you have like a little roll, then you write like timbali roll here. Uh, then this is what the timbali player would be hitting with the, with the band. These are actual breaks that all three percussionists must play. Um, you know, when the chorus comes in. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much uh, what, and then like, for example, you have something that's called Masacote Creando 3-2. They're all like keyword terminology that there should be like a dictionary for this, like for the for the Latinos, how they actually read their charts because they're, it's just all terminology really. And for example, Creando means that you're creating and there really isn't any particular rhythm that, is specific so you have to listen to the record so that you know that in that part you have to play that specific rhythm that percussionist did in the studio to create for that particular track right so um so yeah you know what i'll do is i'll send you uh felicia maybe like one of my charts or something if somebody were to have that you know and then they can see how i notate it but basically like this is an easy way to be able to read a percussion chart in a popular format and setting um the only thing with this that is if you play it back in the score, then you wouldn't have like an actual tumbao. So what I do is sometimes when I want to listen to it back in the score, I'll just add like a particular conga uh, to the actual score, like on the bottom, and then mute the percussion because it'll just be playing like a bunch of, you know, basically it wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to be heard really well. And what I like to concentrate is more on the harmony stuff, because this is, this would play back exactly what it is, you know, all my brass stuff, all articulations. Um, and then, um, and then you can actually listen to it with good rhythm. So that's that. Hey, Tony, I have a question for you. Yeah. 
do you, first of all, your, your music's killing. I love it so much. Oh, it's so awesome. Um, let me see. Do you, uh, did I just share this Amazon page right here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know this book by Ed Uribe, the essence of, of course, yeah. man, so, that, that's, that's the book. I, I learned that book. Uh, that was the first book I learned for percussion, man. It's amazing. So I, I was, when you're talking about that, I was going to say for people who, this is, there's a lot of great drum books for, for um, percussion, uh, Afro-Cuban music, but in, in this book, Ed actually explains song forms and some of the things you mentioned, like not just the grooves, but um, some of the song forms. And it's like, I was just going to suggest it for people who are like, haven't played a lot of the music, but want to learn it. Yeah, that's, um. Wow, thank you so much for for mentioning that, Joe, because that book is like it's like the holy grail of of real like just learning the real essence of Afro-Cuban percussion. And actually, so people know that the Afro-Cuban rhythms is like, I would say 90 percent of all like Latin tropical popular rhythms that you'll ever play or need to play. Like when you listen to a Latin jazz song, 90% of the time it's going to be an Afro Cuban rhythm. That's why the song, I mean, that's why that book is called The Essence of Afro Cuban Percussion because a lot of people, when they say Latin, they think that it involves like all these other countries, you know, from South America and the tropical and the Caribbean. But in reality, it's not really like it, it really just came from Cuba. That's how important Cuba was. And so that book is amazing. Uh, and, and to that, to, to extend on that. So the Brazilian music tradition of Samba, Bossa Nova, when, when a high school student brings in a chart and it says Latin on the top, which they all say, if you're band directors out there, don't do that. If it's a Samba, write Samba. If it's, yeah. you know, if it's, if it's a, a Mambo, right. Mambo, like it, it's, there's no, like that, term latin is to me i mean you know it seems like it's just an outdated yeah. thing to say even at this yeah point. actually a, a lot of people nowadays like when they say latin it means afro-cuban and so brazilian is its own thing I, I i consider brazil like its own its own world like brazil itself is incredible musically you know there's just so many rhythms and so much music and the music from brazil is so different too mm -hmm. Um, so actually, Ed Uribe, I think, actually came out with the essence of Brazilian, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like a whole book of just Brazil and yeah. Cuba. And then um, I got to do, I got to do like maybe a Peruvian one, you know, because Peru has some cool rhythms too. <laughs> you can write it with Alex Acuna. You guys yeah. do it together. <laughs> That's awesome. Man. He's amazing. There were um, I, actually um, a couple of quick uh, answers if if uh, uh, people asked about what is a ghost note i guess we have some some non-drum set players here so just just so you guys know what that is who the people who asked it's it's these a ghost note is a super soft note on the snare drum that's in you know kind of sounds like a shaker in the groove really quiet and it's notated with this uh, parentheses it's a, it's a note in parentheses like this and um I, the reason i'm answering this question is i just wanted to say that if you're planning on publishing your work as like a book, you, you should pay attention. You shouldn't just go with how the things look in default. So for instance, this note right here, let me see if I could zoom in. Uh, these notes were um, the default way. Can you guys see the, see the note in parentheses? Okay. The, the default stem connection for that is the stem hits the parenthesis on this side and I don't like the way that looks. I think it should hit the note and not the parenthesis. So I, that's one of my customized things in my, my drum set map is that the stem hits the, you know, so, and just, if you're going to publish this self publish or submit it, um, you know, to hopefully use your own engraving in a publication, you should, you need to think about all those little details. So, and to answer that question for what I change in the percussion map, I really, I put a diamond for the ride note head, and then I change this thing in the in the uh, ghost note. I change it to hit the note. But most of the new finale drum set map is pretty on the money. Um, and then one other quick answer: if you somebody asked about the open hi hat sound versus the closed hi hat sound, so like you, you hear uh, you have hi hat open here and hi hat closed. If you want to show that it's an open hat, you have to add an articulation to that to that note. 
so you can't um, I just looked I don't think you could do it in a map so you have to add the articulation here so you would go in and find an articulation which is O for an open hi-hat and then plus for a closed hi-hat um, do you guys I don't know if you can add that in the map match this because match the open sound to the uh, I don't know if anyone knows that but anyway that's how I do it and then like Tim said once you're in the, in action you're just cutting and pasting a lot so it usually works out so anyway I'll shut up now there you go we are unfortunately right at the end of our hour already and I wanted to give everyone all of our panelists a chance to give their final thoughts so before we close it out I'm going to be putting in the chat one more time. I know there were some issues with the links. I'm going to put them in there. They will also be emailed out. Um, we've got li links from me, but also links from the panelists that I'll email out tomorrow with our replay link of this video. Um, don't forget that we have a promo code going on at Finale. Make it stick gets you 30% off a new purchase or upgrade of Finale. Um, and any questions that we didn't get to, there are like 88 of them, I think. So any questions that we didn't get to today, I'm going to be putting together an FAQ email and we'll send those out sometime next week. So keep an eye on your inbox for that. Before we close it out, Joe, Tim, and Tony, if you would give us one final thought, if, any, if your audience can take one thing away from today, writing for percussion and finale, what would it be? Okay, I'll go you, first. Okay. Okay. Tony, take it. Well, you know, um, I, one final thought. I would say, um, well, first of all, thanks for, for finale existence, you know, um, and, you know, some people it, have tried to drag me out to, to the competition. I won't even name them, you know, but uh, I've always been a hardcore finale um, f fan and user. And it's it's basically to allow ourselves. Uh, this is the way I see finale. It, it's 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 a way for us to put our craft, uh, which is the music. Uh, together you know whether it's a transcription or I've done like over 200 transcriptions I focused more on the orchestration you know so it's very important to know that this is a process of 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 learning you're going to find out little things and, and this the webinar was awesome because I've just learned so much with you guys <laughs> like seriously Tim and Joe you guys are amazing and uh, it's really about that like and and feel free to reach out to and, and be a part of this like I guess we should I don't know, start like a group chat or something, but this is really cool, you know, to have like a little community of, of, of friends that, that you can vibe with so you can learn quicker ways to do things and, and know how to do it the correct way. But there is really a correct way to do music. So maybe a way that I like to do it uh, is different than yours, but um, I love that Finale just keeps developing itself, you know, um, and, and there's so many things constantly being upgraded. So I have to make it, a priority to see whenever there's an update to find out what those updates are because now I find myself like I'm still stuck sometimes in the past like with Finale like you know back in 2010 or something you know uh so so yeah just make sure that and and yeah thanks thanks so much for for the invitation Joe do you want to Tim you go I'll, 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 okay I'll, yeah best for last um so <laughs> so yeah I mean Joe and Tony both have like blown my mind with a couple of things that I need to follow up with them for. And that's the first thing that I would say, like you can, in the links that, you know, they're going to send out, um, there's like different ways you can connect with the things that I put out into the world. Probably the most uh, direct way is I'm doing a series right now for drummers and finale on the finale YouTube channel. So go in the comments there, watch those videos, because they actually answer in depth a lot of the questions that were asked. But also, um, they if you go in the comments and ask questions, that actually gives me real-time feedback that I can put in the next video. Um, one of the next videos is going to be MIDI and drums with Finale. So that's something we didn't quite get to here, but a lot of you had questions about it. So that'll be on the YouTube channel. So make sure you go there. And then the other thing that I would say is, you know, um, it can be overwhelming and you can feel like there's a lot of rules that you don't know yet and that will delay you doing something. But uh, I didn't know what I was doing when I first started using Finale. I just knew I had stuff I wanted to transcribe and then I did it and then it was wrong and then it got a little bit better and, and now I'm at a place where it's it's right more than it's wrong. But even today, Joe's like, you know, 
the stem shouldn't hit the parentheses, it should hit the note head. And I'm like, he's totally right. <laughs> Why have I never edited that? That's something that like now I'm thinking through the like hundreds and hundreds of transcriptions I've done. And I'm like, I want to fix all of them. Sorry, bro. So, yeah, no, it's a good thing. It's The point is you're always going to be learning. So don't start until you have it all right because you aren't going to have it all right. And everybody, like Tony said, like Joe said, like everybody has a slightly different way. So just get started with what you have and then like learn from there. So, Joe. Awesome. Well, I want to say, first of all, the Tim, the things you transcribe, I couldn't do in a million years. And, and Tony, I'm so thrilled to be here with you, man. The things that David Garibaldi from Tower of Power said about you, uh, it's like, man, really uh, hearing your music for the first time, I'm, I'm a fan. So I'm honored to be with both of you guys. And Felicia, thank you for setting this up. It's been great. Um, so for all the time I've been using Finale, I'm still not good enough at it to like, you know, if I start transcribing something or making a chart, I I might get like bogged down and like, oh wait a minute, how do I wait, how do I default all the rests to land? You know, and then I'm I'm in the weeds, you know. So my final thought would be I'm thinking about so I did this book, it's called The Working Drummer's Chart Book. And the, the thesis of this book is I wanted drum charts to fit on one page for my gigs. And this is what they look like when I write them out. Okay. So my advice, my thought, and, and so I went through this process of uh, help by my Stu former student and great drummer Dan T Traglia, um, my project was to put these into Finale and it had all the play aid and all these things I didn't know how to do. So my advice is take something that you have written out and just have Finale practice. Just like, you know, don't maybe separate it from transcribing in real time or charting in real time, but just take the chart and be like, oh, okay, wait, how do I do that? And then have a little practice session on it and then when the time comes to actually really do the charts, hopefully you built built up your knowledge base. And again, just really use that help resource. It's pretty much like giving me the answers to almost everything I've needed. So, so those are my two little tidbits. Joe, Tim, and Tony, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you everyone for joining us. I've seen a lot of requests for a part two, so stay tuned. We'll see what we can do with that and. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye.